Okay, the next feature is the Manage Dates feature. The Manage Dates feature has been here uh, for around for a while, but it recently um, now includes content and other pieces that have been added to it. So you can now, in a roundabout way, release your content to students based off of dates. Um, D2L is working on, and they haven't given a timeline, but they are working on releasing content uh, in a much easier way by dates through, you know, when you just add something to the content area, there will be an option for you to make it um, visible or hidden or release by date. But that uh, is not on the, uh, there's no timeline for that yet. So in the meantime, there is a way to do it, but it is a little bit of a roundabout way and it takes a bit of time. Uh, it's not hard, but it's just a little confusing um, to navigate and to read what the, the options that they're giving you. So if you want to release this content uh, at specified times, you can consider using the manage dates option. Again, it's not the most user friendly, but it is useful. So manage dates can be found under course admin. So the best practice is to hide your content pieces in question and then go into manage dates to set the specific release date and time that it will become visible to students. So let's demo that now. Here's my classroom under content. I have uh, two units here. So unit one with two sub modules and information and then uh, unit two I have over here. So I'm currently on unit one with the students and unit two starts on Monday, November 8th. Monday, November 8th. So I don't want students to have access to it yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go under course admin and then we're going to go under manage dates over here. So um, it does come up. It is, like I said, not very user friendly. So it basically shows you all of the dates that are attached to anything within your course and any tool at all. So right off the bat, we want to filter down to content only. So you're going to click specific tools and content and then click apply filter and now only your content pieces will show up uh, it is a little bit of a mess but i have found uh, that by clicking type it sort of organizes it by your folders so you know you have your unit one folder then you have your first subfolder and then you have your content pieces and then you have your second subfolder and your content pieces within there and then you have your second unit folder your first uh, second the first subfolder under the second unit and then your content piece there so they're, they're, by, by clicking type, it at least organizes it a little bit nicer for you. So now, uh, unit one, what we can do is we're going to set the dates for unit one to be available to students. Um, you can set a due date or availability. So I'm not sure how useful due date would be, um, but feel free to use that. But I'm going to be looking at availability. So for start date, I started unit one in uh, September and you actually have to physically type it. There's no date picker here, which is a little bit of a pain, but I started unit one, I believe it was September um, 12th. So September 12th, 2021, and I'll say 8 a.m. is when I started it and I'll save that. And then for unit two, this is what I don't want the students to see yet. So um, we're going to uh, click the down arrow and click edit dates. And then we're going to click start date. And I want it to be available on the 8th at 8 a.m. There we go. So now you can see the dates have been added there and uh, we're good to go. There's no save button. It saves automatically once you click the dates in. So now uh, from the course home, we'll go back to content. And then you can see here that the availability has now been noted on it. And so because September 12th already passed, unit one is available to students, but because November 8th is not passed, unit two is not available to students yet. And you can see that it is currently hidden from students with this icon here. So whatever you do, don't touch the hidden button because if you try and touch the hidden button, it says if you make it visible, it, the dates uh, restrictions will be removed. So we don't want to clear the dates. We're just going to cancel that option right there. So it's going to stay hidden for now. What you can also see is that now on the um, calendar, it actually makes a note that unit two will be available on November 8th. If you try and remove it from the calendar, if you're thinking, well, I don't want it to be visible on the calendar, unfortunately, that's not an option because when you try and delete it, it says deleting it removes all the restrictions from the unit two. So that unfortunately would go away. Um, it does give a preview to what's in the unit, so keep that in mind as well. So students, if they're a little bit uh, nifty, they can click on the calendar and then it shows them actually what will be contained within the unit itself. But uh, for now, let's just grab a student to see what a student sees. 
Uh, actually, before we grab a student, I do want to show you that this uh, preview button, preview as student, does not work properly. So uh, when you do preview content as student from that little cog over there, it doesn't actually work because right now it shows the students what, uh, what, what you already have hidden. So that's not correct. So don't preview as that. Always go into the class list and grab a student and impersonate the student from here. And you can see here we go that the student sees the upcoming events. And when they click on it, uh, it shows them what is contained within uh, unit two. So just keep that in mind that students will be able to see what's in unit two when you do this. And then under content, you can see that they cannot view unit two at all yet. They can only view unit one. Uh, unit two is not visible for them. So once November 8th comes around, it will automatically uh, populate for them.